Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This episode is about star clusters and globular clusters. I'll tell you about them, and after that, we'll look at some through one of my telescopes. You're probably familiar with the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, in the constellation Taurus. The Pleiades is a star cluster. Star clusters are collections of stars that formed at the same time from the same cloud of gas and dust or nebula, and they're gravitationally bound to each other. They are concentrated within the disk of the Milky Way, almost always within the spiral arms. Relatively speaking, star clusters are young, only tens of millions of years old, with some exceptions up to a few billion years old, for example, M67. The oldest known star cluster is NGC 188, discovered by John Herschel in 1825, found in the constellation Cepheus and thought to be 6.8 billion years old. It's magnitude 9.8, but most star clusters are not nearly that old. Star clusters typically contain tens to thousands of stars, and the youngest star clusters are often irregular in shape with clumps of newly formed stars divided by lanes of dust and nebulosity, such as the trapezium cluster found within the Great Orion Nebula M42. Older star clusters, on the other hand, that have not been torn apart by other clusters or gravity of giant molecular clouds or have not dissipated by the death of the older stars are more symmetrical in shape. In these older star clusters, only the slow-burning, low-mass stars remain visible, with the other stars having spent their nuclear fuel and passed on to their new lives as white dwarfs, neutron stars, or even black holes. There are about 1,900 cataloged open star clusters. The largest ones can be greater than 30 arc minutes across. Open star clusters tend to be dominated by hot young blue stars. Star clusters range in apparent magnitude anywhere from under magnitude 1 all the way to magnitude 12. Some of the brightest star clusters are the Hyades and Taurus at magnitude 0.8 and the Pleiades at magnitude 1.6, both excellent binoculars objects. One interesting star cluster to look at is M11, the wild duck cluster in Scutum. It was discovered in 1681 by Godfrey Kirsch, who thought it resembled a flock of ducks in flight because of the V shape. And I hope we get to look at M11 tonight. Some of the most spectacular star clusters are the double cluster in Perseus, the beehive cluster M44, M35 in Gemini, and M6, the butterfly cluster, and M7, both open clusters in Scorpius that I hope we can look at later. As opposed to open star clusters, globular clusters are highly symmetrical balls, extremely old and rich conglomerations of up to several million stars. Globular clusters are distributed throughout the galactic halo, but concentrated toward the center of the galaxy. The stars and globular clusters are old, just a little bit younger than the universe itself, and are mostly red supergiants and yellow stars. That's because the hotter, more massive stars have already exploded in supernovae or ended life as white dwarfs or evolved into planetary nebulae. Our galaxy has about 180 globular clusters ranging in age from 9 to 13 billion years old. They are perhaps a byproduct of the creation of the Milky Way itself. The stars and globular clusters are almost exclusively made up of helium and hydrogen and thus are metal poor. For viewing globular clusters, what you want to do is to try to resolve the individual stars within the cluster. Large aperture telescopes will help resolve densely packed globular clusters into individual stars. Some globular clusters, though, are so densely packed such that even a large aperture telescope won't be able to distinguish individual stars. For distant or smaller globular clusters, you'll need to increase your magnification to identify them. Some notable globular clusters are M13, the Hercules Cluster, one of the most spectacular objects in the Northern Hemisphere. But we won't be looking at it tonight because I covered M13 extensively in a recent video and I'll provide the link to that below if you would like to find out more about viewing M13. 
Also, M4, which is near Antares and Scorpius, M5 and Serpents Kaput, M3 and Canis Venatici, and the spectacular globular cluster M22 and Sagittarius that we will, I hope, look at tonight. Another spectacular globular cluster in Hercules is M92, and if we have time, we'll take a look at it as well. So when it gets dark, we'll look at some star clusters and globular clusters. I'll be back shortly. Conditions are not ideal. In fact, they're pretty dreadful, but I'll go as long as I can. Let's start with open star clusters, and we'll start with M6, the butterfly cluster in Scorpius. It's pretty easy to find. If you go to Scorpius, the giant J, and where the J starts to curl back up is a star Shaula. I think it's an optical double. And you want to find Shaula. And M6, the butterfly cluster, is just about exactly 5 degrees north and east just a tad from Shaula. So I've decided for this presentation to use my Orion 115 millimeter triplet refractor. I started with a 32 millimeter eyepiece, but I've increased it to a 16 millimeter eyepiece. So let's have a look. Very pretty. I don't, I can't say I see a butterfly, but it's very pretty. So now I'm going to sketch it. It is about 100 million years old and it contains about 75 stars. And it's very pretty. Now we're going to look at something nearby. M7, also in Scorpius, also close to Shaula, the optical double in Scorpius. And we're going to go about five degrees east and just a tad north to find it. And M7 is 200 million years old and contains about 80 stars. Very pretty. I'm looking at M7, open star cluster in Scorpius. It's about 800 light years away. Very pretty. Now I'm going to sketch it, and I'll be right back. Okay, I finished my sketch of M7, and in case you couldn't see them, because they are very low on the horizon. And since it's turning out to be a very fine evening, and I knew it would be because liars.com, oops, I mean weather.com said it was going to be cloudy tonight, and it's clear. And I can see the Milky Way. It's beautiful. So let's add M25, open star cluster in Sagittarius. To find it, go to the peak of the teapot, the asterism in Sagittarius, and that top star at the peak of the teapot or house, this is what I call it, is Caus Borealis and that's where you'll start. Once you find Caus Borealis, you just go about six degrees north to M25, open cluster in Sagittarius. Wow, very pretty, beautiful, beautiful star cluster. Okay, I'm going to sketch it. I'll be back shortly. I don't feel that my sketch will do M25 justice. It was very beautiful open star cluster in Sagittarius. And for our last star cluster, next we're going to look at a very interesting open star cluster, M11, known as the Wild Duck Cluster in... Scutum. Scutum is a dim constellation made up of fourth magnitude stars, so if you're in a light polluted area, you may not be able to see Scutum. So to find it, find Altair, the brightest star in Aquila, and part of the Summer Triangle from Altair to Delta Aquile to Lambda Aquile, and it's near Lambda Aquile but those are not very bright stars either. 
So it's a little bit challenging to find, but well worth a try because it's pretty special. So I have it in my telescope now. And again, I have a 16 millimeter eyepiece. It's very cool. Very, very cool open cluster in Scutum. M11, the wild duck cluster. I can't say I can see the V. I, maybe if I increase the magnification a little bit. But it's very cool whether you can see the V or not. <laughs> but try to see if you can see the V. Now I'll sketch M11 and I'll be right back. Okay, I finished my sketch of M11, the wild duck cluster in Scutum. It was kind of difficult to sketch, and in sketching it, it did almost kind of look like a V. I, I increased my magnification, by the way. I put this eight millimeter that I had given up on, but actually it looked pretty good. That gives me a uh, hundred times magnification because this is a hundred, eight hundred and five millimeter focal length telescope. Um, it's a very cool, very cool open cluster. Now we're going to look at some globular clusters. I love globular clusters. We're going to start with something low key though to begin and build up to something very dramatic. We'll start with M71, a globular cluster in Sagitta, the arrow. To find it, find Cygnus the swan and find Alberio, the head of the swan, the famous double star. And M71 is about halfway between Altair, the brightest star in Aquila, and Alberio. It's about approximately 10 degrees from each one of those stars, but about three degrees east. Um, Sagitta is a very dim constellation. If you can see it, it's in between two of the stars in Sagitta. Okay, let's have a look at it. My chair is too high. but I'm so happy I can sit in the chair. Wow. Okay, globular clusters, as I said earlier, they're more like tight balls, and, and this one certainly is a tight ball, densely packed, but significantly farther than the other things we've been looking at. M71 is 20,000 light years away. Now we're gonna look at a globular cluster in Scorpius. Very easy to find. It's only about five degrees northwest of Antares, the bright orange star in Scorpius. It's 32,000 light years away and it contains hundreds of thousands of stars. It's about 13 billion years old and it's magnitude seven, I think. So let's have a look at it. And it's like a typical Globular cluster, it's a tight ball. Okay, I'm gonna sketch it. I'll be back shortly. Now we're gonna look at another globular cluster in Scorpius that's nearby and very easy to find, M4. It's only one and a half degrees from Antares, the orange star in Scorpius. So you should be able to fit both in your finder scope. It's uh, about 7,000 light years away. It's about 12 billion years old and it's magnitude 5.6. So let's have a look at it. I've looked at it many times. It's very cool. Very, very cool. Okay, I'm gonna sketch M4 and then we'll move on to our next slide. For our pen ultimate object, we're gonna look at something very cool. A globular cluster in Sagittarius, M22. It's 9,700 light years away. 
It's about 12 billion years old. It's 32 arc minutes across and it's magnitude 5.5 and it's thought to contain 80,000 stars. Let's have a look. Wow, very, very cool, very neat. All right, I'm gonna sketch M22, globular cluster in Sagittarius, very, very cool. Be right back. And for our last object, we're gonna look at a spectacular globular cluster in Hercules. It's almost as spectacular as M13. It's M92, one of the oldest clusters in our galaxy at 14 billion years old. It's magnitude 6.4 and it's 14 arc minutes across and it's thought to contain 330,000 stars. Let's have a look at M92 in Hercules. Wow, wow, it's just beautiful, it's spectacular. So have a look at M92. I'm gonna go sketch it now. I'll be back shortly. Okay, I've finished my sketches. I hope you like them and found them useful. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation on star clusters and globular clusters. I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.